Welcome to AM Kevin with your host, Kevin Shorey, coming to you live from the Branson Mill in Branson, Missouri. Today's special guest, Doug Gabriel, Jay Scribner, and Jared Connie. And now, here's your host, Kevin Shorey. Hey, good morning. What a full show. What a great show we have here today. Let's start off with a Christmas song, one that I wrote a while back on the Morningside Family Christmas CD. And uh, I'm just in love with Jesus even more. And I'm so thankful for Christmas. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Your love always included me. Lord, I love you right back because your love is for eternity. Yeah, with the love that you give, I have purpose to live. Came to this earth to show all men would know that I love that you love that your love always included me. Yeah, from the start of the world, you had me on your mind. I was made a self portrait, a heavenly design. And though sin entered in and it tore us apart, you restored us with love and you ransomed my heart. Yes, you did. Oh, say it with me. I love how you love that your love always included me. Lord, I love you right back because your love is for eternity. You live in this earth, all men would know. Whatever. I love how you love that your love always included me. I should have recorded it slower. From the now on on, I'll love you. Not just seasonally. I love to walk and talk with you because you chart my destiny. I'll try to tell others and show them the way. The reason for the season is to love you every day. Every day, yeah. Come on, one more time I'll try. I love how you love that your love always included me. Lord. I love you right back because your love is for eternity. Yeah, with the love that you give, I have purpose to live. Came to this earth to show so that all men would know that I love that you love that your love always included, included me. I love how you love that you love. It's a love I can love. Yes, I love. Uh, I love how you love. It's a love that you love that I love. Yes, I love. I love how you love that you love. It's a love I can love. Yes, I love. Ha. I love how you love that you love. It's a love I can love. Yes, I love. Oh, yeah. I love how you love that you love. It's a love that I love. Yes, I love. Oh, I love how you love that you love. It's a love I can love. Yes, I love. You, Lord. Yeah. I have, to, I have to get some calories back. That was like, really, that was an exercise there. Next time I record a song, I'll do it slower. That's for sure. I, but it's okay. I can get calories. Today is National Maple Syrup Day. And so, yes, I know. What a great celebration. Up in Vermont, they're celebrating. You know, wherever. They, they tap that, that maple right out of the uh, tree and uh, make good Aunt Jemima's... <laughs> log cabin or if you like walmart best choice <laughs> pancake and walnut syrup you know nobody brought me pancakes or wall wa waffles wallops that's a that's a that's a that's a waffle with syrup a wallop yeah no but nobody brought me pancakes and i know oh i know because i told them it was syrup it was national maple syrup day and you know you just can't have maple syrup by itself no that would be gross but you know, we do have coffee and donuts here all the time, and so I thought, well, you know, why not a syrup on a donut? Why not just make it just really nice and... Do now, doesn't that look just... That looks so edible. Food Network just wants to hire me right away for that one. I know they do. But it is maple syrup day. And of course, doesn't that just look luscious? Anybody want to eat that? Anybody want to try that? Okay, don't mind if I do. All right. Let's see if it's edible. Let's see if it even... It's like sugar on sugar. How can it not be good? I, I've put syrup on my french fries before. I mean, because it's just, because you know ketchup is mostly sugar anyway. It's just tomato syrup, right? So I bypassed the tomato and just went right to the sugar. And thought, oh, yeah. oh, that's so, so very, very extra too sweet. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm going to, wait a minute, coma. Diabetic coma right now, coming, coming at the ambulance. Anyway, 
It's more than National Syrup Day. Today, unless anybody else is having a birthday or anniversary. Anybody have a, a wedding anniversary or birthday this week? Nobody does. But there are people that did have birthdays today. Gene Rayburn. Anybody know who Gene Rayburn was? Yeah. Gene Rayburn. My staff does. Usually the audience just sits clueless. I don't know. They don't. But Gene Rayburn had one of my favorite game shows of all time. I think, and I say this now because our game show guy was here yesterday who did Hollywood Square's gong show and newlywed game, but, but the all-time, and it's been voted on Game Show Network, the number one game show of all time. People voted. Yes, they did. They voted that this was their most entertaining game show. Match Game. It was called Match Game. So Match Game 76, 75, 74, 77. They did it every year. And I think it was more of a comedy show than it was a game show. But Gene Rayburn was the host of that and, and other shows, I'm sure. It's also Ernie Hudson's birthday. Anybody Ernie Hudson fans? We know. You should have the music for this, you know. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. That's right. He was in Ghostbusters. Bill Pullman. His birthday today. And you know Bill Pullman. Another science fiction movie. Very famous. He's been in a lot of them, but. And they're making a, they're doing a part two finally after like 20 years. Thank you, Patrick. Independence Day. That's right. He, I think he played the president. Was he the president? of? Yeah, he played the president on Independence Day. And they're making a brand new one. Speaking of movies coming out this weekend, finally, after all this time. Yes, you guessed it. Here it is. A saber. The force is not with me. May the force be with me. Cut the calories. Thank you, yes. Anyway, so... Thank you. Star Wars is... That would make a great, it looks like a giant popsicle. Why do I think of food? I don't know. So anyway, Star Wars comes out, so may the force be with you or whatever, all that garbage. But uh, <laughs> it, 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 really is, it, it really is fun. I like it because it's a lot about good versus evil, and good always wins, right? Right. Thinking of right, everybody say right. Today, the Wright brothers, thank you, through the f flew the first airplane. It's just, oh, yeah. Flew the first airplane at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, today, December the 17th. Also, already said about syrup, but also, you know, I was thinking, we had an auction yesterday, and so far, we, we've had bids for the auction, and so far, we're just, we're di but we're just only up to $15, so I'm giving it to the end of this show. By the end of the show, we will we'll announce a winner, but this is, this is just favorite. This is in our store. And this is one of the things, I just picked one of the things out of Christina's cre 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 crustaceans. <laughs> Why are words just not coming easy today? I don't know. Let's do over. Start it again. But um, bum, bum, bum. Welcome, everybody. Okay. From Christina's Creations, we have this homemade uh, Mickey Mouse scarf and the mittens dun -dun, with, with the Mickey Mouse on there and the hat. This would make a great Christmas present, and we will promise we'll get it. If, even if we have to FedEx it, we will get it to you for Christmas so you can give it away. So right now we're at $15, but I know this it's, it's worth so much more uh, than that. So if you can have, if you bid between now and the end of the program, uh, this is the first time we've ever done a little auction. But the proceeds, of course, will go into the ministry, and this will bless... Uh, granddaughter or you know strange grandson there you go yeah. it would be there you go or a son or a daughter you know depending on your age and i have my phone on nobody's supposed to keep their phones on but i kept my phone on there's me with the sloth my favorite moment of christian television i, I enjoy doug gabriel i enjoy mickey gilly i've enjoyed barbara Fairchild. great guests we've had here famous wonderful people but the sloth is my favorite guest of all times he was so awesome Sorry, Doug. Anyway, so, but I have, so I have the phone on, and Marshall, you're close. Come on up here. Uh, I have the phone on, so I'm taking your request. You can text me live. We're at 15 right now. I'd like to go up to, to at least 50, but we'll see what happens. Do we have any, Mark, did you get any? 
Mark's going to check to make sure we got any. But that's a good gift, isn't it? Isn't that? Yeah, I like it. I can see your sister when she was little wearing oh, something yeah. like that. Madison. Actually, I can see her doing it now. I don't know. <laughs> She's crazy like She's that. Hey, but you got a show uh, Saturday? Yes, sir. It's a big, 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 big day, isn't so it? So we're getting into sports. the first bowl games. There's going to be three on Saturday. Um, the, the bowl season kicks off and it lasts. Uh, I'd rather not. Uh, <laughs> smart man. <laughs> but uh, bowl season kicks off and it lasts for about a month as Star Wars is out and continues. But, um, you know, basketball is going to be big right now. Yes. So in the SEC, we have, we're mainly a football conference. But we've got one school who thrives in basketball. Who's that? Kentucky. Oh. And they're the best, one, one of the best with North Carolina. I with like their Duke. fried chicken anyway. <laughs> there you go. But, that, you know, they're, they're really a basketball school. And so as we get into basketball, as we get into start covering all the sports that we have, um, after this will be baseball season. The SEC's had eight straight years. We've been in the national championship game for that sport as well. So, uh, you know, we're pretty much successful at everything. We want to cover all the bases for at Dixie Fieldhouse, and we want to talk about all the history that we have, not just football. I know, and you do so well. Your monologue and everything is world famous now. <laughs> yes, sir. I love that. You have a few followers, you know. You, you get more hits and stuff than I, you know. And hits for all the older folks. Hits are, are when people go online and watch you. Right. right. And, or listen to you. It's not. <laughs> yeah. that's Although sometimes Alabama fans want to hit me when I talk about Tennessee, though. I, I know, <laughs> but you you give equal time to everybody. I do, I do. You're and you know, we Tennessee's been a little bit down the past ten years. You yeah. Know? So we almost have to kind of relish in the success of the conference in the sense that you know when my team doesn't do so well, then we kind of look at okay, well we're winning seven national championships in a row. We're beating a lot of teams in the NCAA tournament for basketball. You know, so it's something we kind of take solace in. And we talk about it as it's family, that we can fight with our brothers, but you slight them and we have a problem. You yeah. Know? So <laughs> that's kind of how we look at it. We're, we're yeah. family in the SEC in the cool. South. And so everybody needs to listen. What time are you going on? Are you going on live or are you going to have a re? You're going to Well, we're, we're, we're kind of still working on how it's going. You know, we're, yeah. um, we've done six shows so far. Yeah. Um, three have just had our monologue and three have had an additional segment afterwards. One mm -hmm. time we uh, interviewed uh, Mississippi State football player Reggie Harris. Yeah. And uh, the first one we did, uh, like we had that. the family here. And we had a kind of an audience show and everything. So we're going to keep doing them um, just whether w which week dictates. You know, we might just do a monologue one week, but the next week we might have a, a guest. There's a Missouri State women's basketball coach. Her name's Kelly Jolly, and she played for the Lady Vols. Yeah. So we're maybe going to do a, a tribute to the legendary Pat Summit, who was uh, Tennessee's oh, head wow, coach. Yeah. She's got Alzheimer's now, so she can't coach anymore, but wow. she was one of the greatest. In fact, she's the winningest head coach in NCAA basketball history. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, awesome. Men or women. Yeah. So uh, we, we want to do maybe a tribute to her and have, have Coach Jolly come on, and, and it'll be really cool. So yeah. That's awesome. Well, great things ahead. We're feeding back now. But uh, great things ahead. And uh, I'm excited about the future. We are, sing of the future, dun, 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 dun. but the future, we are uh, on Roku. You can, you can go on, now, well, right now the, you have to have a certain code to get on, so it's not like y we're on on yet, but yeah. we, we, well, we're on. I mean, There's if you're on Roku, Roku right, right now yeah. and you can get to the secret passwords or something, if you had them, ask us for them. Maybe we can get them to you ask somehow. The, dro the droids will do it for yeah. you. <laughs> Yeah. See, see, there's you from another show. There you go. That's no, that's, no, no, that's me from ten seconds ago. Oh, so we're live on Roku. <laughs> well, bless my heart. I'm telling you, we're, we're moving right along. Anyway, so but you're going to be on the network on the Roku, the WGAN. Yes, sir. Which stands for? We got a network. We got a network. <laughs> okay. And so go to the WG. It turned on again. Ooh, the force is really with me. All right. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Feeling good. Did you hear? I got healed this week. I heard that. That's why I feel, I'm so excited, and I'm uh, like I'm just like almost tongue-tied excited. You know how, but you know, real quickly, as we talk about Star Wars a little bit, you know, yeah. you're talking about good and evil, you know. Well, we might want to examine the movies a little bit, you know, more because I don't know if the light side necessarily is the good side. They Ooh. talk about they don't love each other. They're supposed to only be about knowledge, not love. Whereas the Sith, they're about passion. They're about <laughs> so it's a different, interesting. You are messing thing. with my mind uh, now. You might don't wanna. mess with my mind on this Star <laughs> Wars stuff. <laughs> Anyway, Star Trek is better stories anyway. But anyway. 
I just walked into it. It's kind of like how I don't like cats, but I love dogs. I think the I Wizard don't know. of Oz no, is Nobody the best. likes that. Huh? The Wizard of Oz is the best, in my opinion. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Let's just go with the wizard. Yes, because we know good and evil there. There you go. There you go. All <laughs> right. Let's start off with a song all the way from Hamilton, Ohio. We have a wonderful guest. We have been over to the church, and we've had a couple different revival services. Great, great, great revival services. People healed. Cancer healed from cancer, uh, finances restored. I mean, all kinds of great healings and miracles. Shout out to the pastor, because I know pastor and his wife, are they are watching, and grandma, they have to be. This is their son and their grandson, and so uh, we know Kevin, that they're Kevin, watching. Hi to you. Are they Kevin, watching? I'm interrupting you real quick. $25. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, 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 on the, on the Mickey stuff. Yeah, yes, tw 25. $25. Yeah, tw 25, 25. It'll all, right. all be in one piece, I promise, when we send it. It'll be good. All right. <laughs> I'll keep it warm for you till we get 25. So we're up to 25. My phone's on. Call as we have a song. Just lead us in back to the Lord because we've gone really carnal. All right. <laughs> <laughs> here is all the way from Hamilton, Ohio. Here's Jared Koning. Yes. Thank you for being here.
Jared Conning. And so, Jared, 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 thank you so much. And he's going to come back and play so much. Uh, play, play, play some more. Let's just thank him so much for flying all the way out here from Ohio, coming visiting. It's wonderful. We have today, we have uh, Jay Scrivener on the show today. Would you welcome Brother Jay to the, to the program? I don't know. I'm messing up words. you got to help me today, Brother well, you're Jay. you sticky. you got syrup. i got you. syrup. It's, you know, National <laughs> Maple <laughs> Syrup Day. It's a sticky situation. Maybe tomorrow's National uh, Thai Detergent Day so I can clean stuff. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out something. But tell us where you're from. What's your background? Where are you, where were you born and raised? Are you an uh, Ozarkian? I'm from Illinois. Illinois. East Central Illinois. Okay. Illini, you bet. All right. But I've been in Branson, Missouri for 38 years. Yeah, yeah. I've been yeah almost a native. Almost, yeah. You know what I found out last night, by what the way, useless information? Out? That uh, D Dairy Queen was started in Illinois, just so, so you know that. Really? Yes. Somebody dragged me there That's against my will. That's a pretty good claim will. to fame, I think. It's, it's really good, yeah. yeah. The blizzard was invented in Decatur, and the first yes. shop was in Joliet. Wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That's so. good. I like lizards. It's I like <laughs> DQ lizards. <That's laughs> I good. do, too. I, uh, I've, I've given up on lizards and gizzards and boa blizzards <laughs> and all that. But uh, but I eat maple-covered donuts. <laughs> I've noticed that. It's, I know, brother. Pray for me. Please pray for me. And I'm so not sure even God can heal that deal. <laughs> <laughs> so now you came from Illinois to the to Ozark. Oh wait, I think that what? hole is healing up as we speak. As it's speaking up, yeah. You know, that was the old, uh, you know, Oral Roberts used to send out <laughs> records and that's why he stopped doing that. That's records. right, because the whole the whole kept healing up. Yeah, I know. Uh, but I thought, thank I you. thought that was pretty good myself. Uh, it was a great joke. It it's lasted for you know seventy years. I mean, that was since the fourth. That gets your cue to laugh. Thank you, <laughs> or give me a hand. Something. Do yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm going to get serious here. <laughs> but uh, so you come from Illinois to the Ozark. What brought you here? Well, I. Uh, sort of migrated south from Illinois, went to uh, college in Hannibal, Missouri, and then uh, okay. that was junior college, and then a uh, bachelor's degree in Oklahoma, and then master's degree uh, seminary in Fort Worth, and after wow. that, we uh, had an opportunity, God, we just felt God was uh, calling us into a pastorate at yes. that time. I'd been on a large staff doing uh, youth and singles ministry uh, in Fort Worth, mm -hmm. but then felt like God was calling us into a pastorate. And as our denomination does, we just uh, get our names out and our resumes out. And yes, uh, got contacted by a little church in Branson, Missouri. Yeah. Didn't know where it was. And uh, right. I tell you what, the rest is history. Been yes. here 38 years. 38 Pastored years, First Baptist Church yes, of Branson sir. for you 28 know, years. I just want to commend you for that. Pastors that stay, they, they really have a heart for their city. And I know there's other circumstances where... Pastors have to move on or whatever, but you know those guys that can stay over because you know the average is like two years. Oh yeah, yeah. but anybody. Well, I'm hard headed, that Kevin. You know, it's hard. You to have to be off. though as a pastor. <laughs> I tried it a little bit, and I'm telling you, I, I'm sorry, I'm not called. I don't know what I was doing, <laughs> but I mean, I was called for that time. Uh -huh. But I just know I'm an evangelist, pure and simple. Sure. Because uh, pastors, and I pray for them. I believe in pastors. I love pastors. I love your church. I love what you guys do are doing. But uh, I, I pray for them, and I hope everybody prays for pastors. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the pastors in your community. And I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm like, uh, they're my heroes. Missionaries and pastors are definitely my heroes that I pray for. And I'm being sincere. I, I'm really telling you from my heart because you guys face things the congregation will never know. They'll never see. And for you to stay in a church more than five years, you've got to be more than just stubborn. And well, ornery. I'll tell you what. That you says a lot about church as well. Yeah. And so we were in a wonderful church, and it still is Amen. Uh, here in this uh, community. Make a great impact uh, in this community. Lighthouse on the hillside and uh, really taking a strong stand we have over the years for for godliness and Amen. for uh, the word of God and the inerrancy of the word of God and just proclaiming truth through Jesus Christ. Amen. We're That's grateful it. to have been here as long as we have and to have had the ministry that we have and the favor of God. Amen. Up on our ministry. Favor. Yeah. Sure. I was thinking about that last night, as a matter of fact, uh, when God told uh, through the angel to Mary that you are blessed and highly 
favored. Because we throw out that word. You hear a lot on Christian television about the favor of God. Sure. I'm walking in the fog, you know, the favor of God. <laughs> and uh, the favor is not something we have his favor. We, we are blessed with grace and mercy. And by his grace, we're saved. But I think the favor comes from really living the lifestyle of a Christian, not just saying the sinner's prayer. You know, as you, you honor God, yeah. he's going to honor you. That's, that's so simple. It is. Uh, we make it difficult. Yes, sir. But the uh, fact of the matter is, when you honor God, he honors you. He does. I let our people in uh, repeating that frequently. You'll honor God, he'll honor Amen. you. Amen. Amen. So true, sir. I mean, and obviously Mary found favor by because she honored God in her sure. life. And you look at all the ones that had favor, <laughs> Joseph or Noah, found grace and favor is really the word in Hebrew, in the, in the eyes of the Lord. I mean... Because sometimes we just think, okay, well, we're saved. We got our ticket to go to heaven. You know, we've been baptized. You know, we we pay our tithe. You know, our God tax. So we must really <laughs> be. We live in Branson, you know, with God and country. So you know, we must have favor. But I, I really think it's more than that. We have to honor God with our whole life, and not just at Christmas either. <laughs> it's uh, walking in His principles and precepts. You know, the Old Testament says that uh, this is the whole duty of man that we would mm. fear God. Yes. And keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. That's right. And uh, boy, and you know, Kevin, that's lacking in churches today. Tell it, tell it, Pastor. It's lacking in so many Christian lives, and it's certainly lacking in our nation. Yeah. We don't have a fear fear of God. No, sir. And we don't even know how how to spell the word commandment. So it's mm -mm. no. Well, they're ripping them out of every kind of building and oh, it's crazy. manger scenes and everything to try to take God out. But I think that. Uh, God's people will find favor as they honor God, and uh, we can be that light, that remnant in this dark world right now, because it really is getting scary. We need to be light that dispels darkness. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, I, I like to use that il illustration. You know, you you walk into a you, you walk into a room, and you shine a a, a, a flashlight. Mm -hmm. The darkness doesn't come in and overtake that flashlight. Right. Right. But it's just the opposite. Right. You walk into a dark room, and that light penetrates yes, sir. the darkness. It, it, it dispels. That's what we're called uh, to do. The darkness. I know that's what you're doing over at First Baptist for sure, but uh, can you give a little bit of uh, every pastor I've asked for this season, this month, that's come by, your Christmas message? What, what are you, because you have to come up with a new one every year, you know. You know, here's an interesting thing, and, and you've probably <laughs> heard that, but probably heard this, but uh, years ago uh, in studying for a Christmas series, I was studying in Micah uh, chapter, well, I was studying chapter 5, mm -hmm. and God led me to chapter 4, verse 8, mm. and there's an obscure uh, pr prophecy there uh, in Micah chapter 4, verse 8. And it's about Migdal Edar. Okay. Now you almost never hear that. No, I don't. I don't and, know that I uh, know that name. And you know, when God revealed it to me, now in my subsequent studies, uh, I realized I, I certainly wasn't the only one he ever gave that revelation right. to. Because you can, and, and I want to encourage your, uh, your listeners to uh, go and study about Migdal Edar. Okay. Now I put together actually a three or four sermon series, and so won't touch a whole lot on it today, but here it is in the bottom line. It says that uh, thou, O tower of the flock, yes. unto thee shall it come. Even the first dominion mm. shall come unto you. Mm. Now here's what that is. Yeah. Migdal Edar is just outside of Bethlehem. And uh, about six miles from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Have you been over there to the yeah. Holy Land? Oh, oh yeah, man. three I times. It's so a, oh my! Um, but the Tower of the Flock yeah. was the place where and you better sit down for this. You okay. ready? Because let me tell All you right. something. I'm telling you, when God shared this with me. Uh, it was so profound for me. Now, it didn't take much to overwhelm my little mind. I don't <laughs> mind telling <laughs> okay, you. But right. 
I'm in that when category. God revealed this to me, I was so overtaken mm. by the revelation of it. The tower? The tower of the flock. I'm going to tell you what that is in just a minute. I was so overtaken by the revelation of this that I couldn't stand. I couldn't even continue to sit. Mm, thank you, Lord. I, I laid on the floor bawling my eyes out. Mm. And even to this day, and that's been several years ago, but I'm, I can get weepy over it today, to be honest yes, with sir. you. Yes, sir. And um, uh, I, I laid there for I don't know how long just bawling my eyes out because of the revelation of this. And I went home that, that night and tried to tell my wife, and I just broke into tears. And she said, are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. So I'm fine. I'm fine. Just give me some time to share this with you. And then the following Sunday when I stood up to share it in church at First Baptist, and I told my people, I said, listen, God has just given me some exciting revelation, and I'm going to share it with you today and the next two Sundays regarding Migdal Edar. <coughs> and... Uh, and I started crying there. I just couldn't hold it together emotionally yeah. because it was so profound. And here it is. Okay. And that is that the tower of the flock was where shepherds mm -hmm. kept their flocks. And they used this tower to be able to oversee and to overlook okay. their flocks. Mm -hmm. But... This particular place, Migdal Edar, was the place where sheep were born and raised for the sacrificial slaughter oh. Oh. on the Temple Mount, oh, wow. Wow. just beyond where their eyes could see. Oh, thank you, Lord. And so when John later said, Behold, the Lamb, the Lamb. of God Whoa. Whoa. that takes away Whoa. the sin wow. of the world. And since then, I've studied even more about, mm. the, about the purity of Migdal Edar and where the birthing room, wow. the specific birthing room was kept as sterile as they could at that wow. time in order for those lambs to be proper wow. for the ceremonial slaughter at the temple. And that's where our Savior was born. There that's in it. Bethlehem right at the Tower it. of the Flock, Migdal Edom. And Micah saw that hundreds of years before. Yes, yes. That. And there was a reason that Mary and Joseph would have gone back. They would have retraced their steps. Yeah because they knew the history of that, and there's some interesting history about Migdal Edar as well. Oh, my goodness. Because that's where uh, um, uh, Jacob and... Mm, I don't know my history better than this now. Yeah. But, uh, so where but it was a place of yeah. patriarchs from before. She so it's a it was either Rebecca or Leah yeah. uh, had died there giving birth to uh, Benjamin. Oh, wow. And so uh, I'll tell you what, there's there's rich history. Yeah. Rich history yeah. right there. And that, didn't Jesus come out of the tribe <coughs> of Benjamin? Isn't that from the, the tribe of Judah? Of Judah. That's where he is, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, place. that is. So I, I would encourage your people to study that. Yes, Micah 4, I'm going 8, to now. Migdal Edar, Migdal the Edar. tower of the flock. That's great. Pastor. The place where l ceremonial sheep were born yeah. to die. See, Christmas wasn't just an accident. It wasn't just a coincidence. It wasn't just meant to be a holiday. It was God's plan. Micah prophesied it, and all of the Isaiah, the prophets began to prophesy it. If God can set that up thousands of years, he's already set up your life for you. If you'll just lay your life in his hands, that's what Christmas is all about. I want you to try Jesus. Give him your whole life. Christmas is a good time to say, Jesus, I surrender my whole life to you. You know, he'll take all your sins away. When you don't like how it's going, next year you can get all your sins back. But, you know, it's guaranteed that once you try him, you won't want any other lifestyle. Amen.
Pastor, just lead folks into a prayer that says, Amen. come Amen. to God. You sure. Know, just lead them in that prayer sure. before we go to our song. Heavenly Father, we just give you praise and thanksgiving yes, for this marvelous oh, season of the you. year. And Father, we just thank you that Jesus, the precious, spotless Lamb of God, was born there at Migdal Edar, just outside Bethlehem. Wow. The place yes. where sheep were born to die. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, I thank you that once and for all you paid that supreme sacrifice. And Father, you offer to each of us the marvelous love and grace and mercy of our holy God. Yes, God. You offer the forgiveness of sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Father, there are so many people here in this world today that desperately need our Jesus and the hope that only he can give. Life that is eternal, hope that is steady and steadfast in this turbulent world. And Father, we thank you that your love for us is so great that you have provided for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray and for his sake, to him be glory now and forever. Amen and amen. Amen. He came to be born in Bethlehem, and he came through the way of Migdal Eder, Yes, e -D -A -R. to be led to slaughter, to die for your sins. He shed his blood. The price was paid for eternal life. Pastor, thank you so much. Would you come by once in a while and just give us these inspirational words? You I have blown like my mind. I cannot wait to get into the word. Amen. When I go to bed tonight, when I open up the Bible, because I do it in the morning, I do it at night, and I pray and I ask God for words. I'm telling you, I can't wait to dig into that. Micah. Thanks for having me here. Thank God you, bless Pastor. you. Please, anytime. And thank you for being faithful at First Baptist. We appreciate you here in Branson. Now a great, 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 another man of God that we really appreciate in Branson. He has a great, wholesome, wonderful show. And it's it's uh, shown by the fact that it's sellout crowds. And he's just doing a great job. He's coming to a song that he wrote. It was inspired from his son at Christmas time. And said, he's talking about the toys. Uh, toys under the tree and he says daddy you're my favorite toy something like that he could tell it better but daddy you're my favorite toy isn't that wonderful and uh this is the song that came out of that ladies and gentlemen the one the only i love you doug love thank you, too. you doug gabriel thank you just the other day i was playing with my son Ooh. when he said to be your oh, daddy you're so much fun and as he kept on speaking, his words just blew my mind. He said, Daddy, do you know you're my favorite toy? Then it hit me late at night as I lied there awake, the meaning behind the words he said. And there's no greater joy than to know that my boy considers me his favorite toy. I'm a cowboy, an Indian, a horse if he wants to ride. I'm the pilot of the plane that he holds way up high. I turn into a monster. When he turns out the lights and he just runs and screams, saying, Daddy, get me. I'm a G.I. Joe in that camouflage coat. I'm Batman, he's Robin. We're superheroes. We're a passenger train and he's the engineer. But he sure loves it best when I'm Buzz Lightyear.
I'm a G.I. Joe in that camouflage coat. I'm Batman, he's Robin, we're superheroes. We're a passenger train, and he's the engineer. But he sure loves it best when I'm Buzz Lightyear. It don't matter the toy, I'll be anything for my boy. I'm just so thankful that I'm his favorite toy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brother Doug. Come on up here oh. real quick. Let's talk about, so did I do that right about the song? Yes, that's your right. Son? It happened when he was just a little boy. We were playing on the floor. And uh, while we were playing on the floor, Jordan looked up at me and said, Daddy, you're my favorite toy. Aww. And it hit me so strong that I wrote that song. That's actually the title cut to my Christmas album. I think you're, you're, you're still his favorite toy, but even though he's a lot older now, he's a good-looking young man. <laughs> Thank you. But he's talented as well. I bet his second favorite toy is the drums. Is that correct? Well, both my <laughs> boys play the drums, but the, the son that, I'm, uh, that oh. gave me that inspiration is the one that's doing the comedy now, the oh, crazy one. Oh, the crazy one. Yeah. Wow, there you go. Yeah, he's so. very funny and very gifted, but he also plays the drums and other instruments as well. Yeah, but they all are so talented. Your whole family, it just runs Thank in, you. The, in the blood, doesn't it? Thank you. Amen. I appreciate that. Well, you're, you're going to, after Christmas, folks can still go see your show. You're going to have one week up until New Year's Eve. Is that yeah, correct? we do the 27th through New Year's Eve, and we have a very spectacular New Year's Eve show that's very, oh. very popular. We do uh, uh, give away over $1,000 of nice prizes that night and well, also have go. cake and a three-hour show, the big balloon drop, all the party favors. It's really quite something. Is that sold out, or people still get tickets it, for that? It will be. It's been that way every year. Yeah. It's going really well, so I'm anticipating well, they that. Well, better get the tickets now, then. They're yeah, we'd love to have you, and uh, we like to... Uh, and like I said, a lot of the my sponsors are uh, local businesses, and people get win a lot of nice prizes from Branson that they can use in Branson. And that's what makes us different than the others. Most shows do the food and the whole nine yards, but because it starts at 9 o'clock, we feel most people are going to be eating anyways. So we will go ahead and just do the prize giveaways, and we give away. We even give away a nice uh, stay at the Chateau on the lake. Ooh, so, yeah, wow. it's really something. Everybody went, ooh, right <laughs> there. They know that's really They've been cool. with us for a long time, and yeah. so we appreciate all our sponsors. That's awesome. Well, thank you for being here. Tell what does Christmas mean to you? What do you, what do you think of Christmas? I mean, well, you know, uh, when you think about Jesus' love for all of us and the fact that he was willing to be born in a manger, to live, to die on a cross, right. so that we could be free from our sin, Christmas means everything to everything. me. And uh, in our Christmas show, we make it very, very clear what the true meaning of Christmas is. And that's the birth of Jesus. That's what we're celebrating. That is all. The gift to the whole world. Uh, and he loved everybody that much that he was willing to be born to die. And uh, what Jay said today really hit me. That's something wow, else. Wow, isn't that powerful? Very powerful. And uh, we have a God that is our daddy. He loves us that much, and, and the fact that he, uh, you know, died on the cross, rose from the grave in victory, yeah. conquered death. Uh, we, we have victory through him, and we can have eternal life. All we have to do is just ask him into our heart and believe on him. Amen. And yeah, that truth. It's, it's really that simple. And, you know, there's, there's some people I would die for, but I wouldn't die for everybody. That's right. For sure. <laughs> so when you think of that, that yes. is, there's no greater love. No. No greater love found. It's amazing when you think about that. Come to die. Yeah, for everybody. That's you amazing. Know? All you can do is shout hallelujah. And so, the segue, <laughs> hallelujah, because I asked you, and you're going to do it? I I'm going to do it okay. just for you. you asked I have me. been waiting since you first mentioned it because this is, nobody does this. This is oh. the hallelujah chorus, right? I mean, right. I, I got to tell you anybody? how it came about, okay. how it came about me learning this. My father-in-law. Uh, of course, has watched me for years, and I've been in Branson now 30 years. And uh, he had said to me that he said, uh, Doug, there's a song you've never put in any one of your Christmas shows. That's one of the most popular songs this time of the year. And he also told me that, to his knowledge, that it had never, ever been played on the acoustic guitar before. Right. And I said, well, what song are you talking about? And he says, the Hallelujah Chorus. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, he knows I play by ear. Everything I do instrument-wise, whether it's the piano, wow. guitar, everything wow. I play by ear. Yeah. So I always have to find a version of something to listen to it, and that's how I learn the music I play. So I told my father-in-law, you know I have to hear it, so I'll have to look for it. 
and he didn't think it existed, well, he was correct. I went out looking for it. It wow. did not exist anywhere that I can find on the acoustic guitar, but I was able to learn this from listening to a choral arrangement. That's how I learned it, wow. by listening to a, a choir doing it. Impressive. Wow, but, uh, that's impressive. Anyway, awesome. but anyway, it turned out real well, and this is actually what I end my cr every Christmas show with in our show at the theater. All right, so we so get to hear it. You're going to get to hear it. Kevin. <laughs> All right, are you yeah. all ready? I, could, I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to hear it. Thank you, Doug. Doug's going to go s get set up and everything. But, uh, hey, by the way, while he's getting set up, the auction has go grown to $100 now. Now, I know, for the, for the great uh, Mickey, I, I want my hair to look good to the end of the show, but I don't care anymore. You know, for 100 maybe we can get 200 I don't know. But, uh, oh, where is it? There, there we go. Okay. I'm when, you think, when I'm looking down, folks, I'm looking, there's a monitor there. It's not a mirror, but it's a monitor. Anyway, so there's the Mickey hat. The Mickey mittens will not fit me. The scarf is beautiful, all handmade, handcrafted. By the way, there's other gift items like that at Christina's Creations. We have a sports store. We have Christina's store. We have a tribute to Mark Twain. We have kids stuff. We have stuff when you come in and shop for Christmas, you can have. But the uh, winner of the auction here uh, so far, we'll, we'll announce. We've got 15 more minutes, right? Is that we about 15 left or 10? 12. 12 minutes, all right. 12 minutes left. We'll announce the winner at the very end of the program, and they get the the Mickey Ensemble. By the way, you know, we're talking about Star Wars. You know, Disney is one of my favorite places in all the world. I bet you wouldn't have never guessed that in a million years. But I love Disney World. I grew up in Florida. I could give you a tour of Disney World because I, I said if I was not a preacher, and if I was <laughs> not doing what I do, I would be a Disney World tour guide. That would be my goal in life. Just to like just to take, and I would dress like, I would dress any way they wanted me to. To just to take people on the rides. I love to see people happy. I, I think that's, why I'm in the ministry too, because I love to people see people saved and really happy and have joy. But one of the happiest places on earth, other than, well, heaven's not on earth, but in uh, on earth is of course Disney World. So I love people, uh, and I love Disney. But I was going to say Disney. I can't wait to go back because by the time I get to go back, they got a new Star Wars exhibit that they've got at Disney. They got they have the cafes and the little uh, 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 shows and uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon. You can go through on the uh, in, anyway. I don't even know why I went there, except for I, I love Disney, and I love Handel's Messiah, and I love the Hallelujah Chorus, and I love that on acoustic guitar, Doug Gabriel is going to bring it here right now. Bring it, as they say. Here's Doug Gabriel.
folks. Woo. I don't know how y'all can stay glued to your chair. That was amazing. I could hear that over and over again. One more time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a Jim Baker move right there. One more time. Woo. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even play it, and I'm out of breath. That's just wonderful. Man, what a blessed day. Pastor brought the word. That's the great song. Oh, Doug, that is so amazing. You could do that every time you come, really. Okay. You come because that's good all year long, isn't it? I mean, that is just amazing. That is wonderful. I'm glad you're here, Jared. It's good to have you glad here. here. Mom and Dad's watching, you know, no pressure, you know, just uh, you got to bring it. You sing one of my favorite choruses. I love that Terry Job song, Atmosphere. It's really wonderful. And Bill's sitting in here. Bill, Bill Legacy Ministries, of course, and Bill is really... Uh, just a blessing to this ministry and just pretty much <laughs> keeps us afloat when we're going to when we're starting to sink, you know, because uh, some people don't give as much as they watch. Good thing this is not pay-per-view. I'd never have any viewers. <laughs> but uh, that said, <laughs> there's therefore now no condemnation, so don't worry. But uh, uh <laughs> thank you, Bill, for that. And thank you for introducing me to his mom and dad. Can I say something real quick? Because of course. When... Uh, I met you, what, two, two years ago, two and a half, three years ago, almost I mean, three years ago. Um, and we came to his uh, church, and, and they actually pastor uh, something called the Dream Center. Yes, love and the Dream Center. Awesome. One of the most amazing works mm -hmm. uh, in inner city yep. Hamilton. And uh, anyway, the Lord just kind of connected us. It's really cool how it was started, but I don't want to steal any of his time because I want him to do Well, you know it's inner city work when you walk up into the church steps and you see either blood or syringes, uh, you know, crack vials or whatever. outside. You know you're in the inner city. You ain't playing now. Now you're on the, you know, by the gates of hell, really where you're supposed to be, where God's people are, <laughs> you know, supposed to be ministering. And so I love your dad. And uh, I, I want to memorize that word he said about church. Church should be the place uh, not just where you come to receive a blessing, but where you come, so you are a blessing or something. I'm not saying yeah, it yeah, very I wrong, I'm but, to think what but, to. but that's what the, the really the goal of that church. You see they're all working together to reach out to people. So you, you're part of a great legacy with your your mom and dad. But, you know, going to church don't make you a Christian any more than going in a garage makes you a car, right? right. And, and just because a cat has their kittens in the oven don't make them biscuits, right? You know, so <laughs> you have to <laughs> you have to accept Jesus and be born again. And you accepted Jesus, but... It also doesn't mean everything's just going to be, you know, what we talked about, the favor of God. You have to keep honoring God. And if you allow certain things in your life to come into your life, and, and especially Christmas time, for some people, it's not even a happier holiday. It, it brings depression. And the enemy's tried to use that in your life in the past. I mean, and uh, even though you're a PK, that's a preacher's kid, and you're raised in church, and, and, you know, you love Jesus. There's no doubt that you love Jesus. But... Uh, you know, s things start happening. T tell us about that progression and how God brought you out of that. I mean, you had a really miracle happen in your life. Um, well, it just started out in high school, you know. You just get depressed and whatnot. And, um, you know, girl just doesn't like you back. Oh, you know, those girls. You know, girls, really, girls. Of the devil. They don't um, realize that. <laughs> no, no, don't say that. No, they're not of the devil. Woo. No, 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 no. No, girls, women make the best wives. Let's just put that on record right now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but they don't realize the power they have over men. That's yeah, the deal, absolutely. you know. Absolutely. And, so, and, and, and it really, you know, it's not all them. It, it takes two. But <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> girls, you're not the devil. Okay, you're not the devil. Okay, but, but this one obviously was. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> so what happens? So, I mean, so the depression comes. I mean, the enemy uses things. And uses people, even though they're not Absolutely. trying to be evil, Absolutely. right? And um, it just, you know, you walk down, you go to your work or whatever, and you just will start crying. You don't know what's happening. You're just so full of depression. And yeah, one day I just basically had enough. And I, on April 1st, which April Fool's Day, wasn't intended on that, but um, I tried to actually end my life, and uh, I had a rope around my neck, it was anchored to my car, and I was sitting on the ledge of a of a uh, bridge, and um, and some guy, I was just crying out, you know, God, take me so I don't have to do this. Um, oh, you intended to 
You want to pull off that yeah, bridge? I, you can see it, but some guy drove up and he saved my life because I got off and just freaked out and just, long story short, I went to a mental hospital and it was probably the best thing I ever went through in my well, life. Uh, pretty much God, though, sent like an angel. Oh, absolutely. I He gave me his number, but I can't find the <gasps> the number where he gave it to me. I'd oh, so you think it was a literal angel? Absolutely. Oh, wow. So I was talking to Bill about it, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I do, too. I, I think absolutely this guy comes out of really nowhere, right? And and goes and go comes to his car, right? Yeah. Talks to him. Thank you. Literally, Jesus. it was it was. I believe with all my heart that it was an angel. Oh, I believe in angels for sure. It was really cool, Kevin. A <laughs> couple years ago, I prayed over Jared. And the Lord gave me a word for him about attacks that were coming, and he was be meant to be taken out and taken away. By all means, the devil did not want this young man sitting here right That's now. Right. That's but right. But God intervened, and there's lots of people out there. That are in Christmas season and they're depressed. Tell it, Bill. Come and on. And I'm telling you right now, you don't have to succumb to that depression. Because holidays get really hard when you're alone or when you're into something that you're kind of depressed about anyway. Holidays seem to magnify it. Yeah. And I just believe of all my heart that the Lord is going to take this situation that was Ooh. meant for evil and turn it around for good for a lot of people. This young man is living proof of that. And for him to be here, I, I'd like for him to pray for people. Come on, do it. Uh, because that's going to give the devil one more punch yes. that he couldn't get him. Will you just give the Lord a hand for saving this young man? Amen. You know, the fact that he's able to share this. And, Jared, I just give you a word from the Lord right now that your mm. days are starting to increase. There is going to be a magnification yes. of what God wants to do in your life. An acceleration is going to happen right now. It's starting today. I want you to pray for people out there who are depressed right now. And, and if, they're, if they're thinking of suicide, pray for them right now, Jared. Lord, I pray for everyone out there that's lost a loved one or just not having a good, um, the holidays just aren't good for them. Lord, I just pray that if they're considering um, ending it all, just I ask that you intervene and yes, Lord. just um, send an angel like you sent me. Yes, God. Uh, I just... Hmm. Thank you for being so great. Thank you for letting me be here with Kevin and Bill. And I just thank you for everything you do. I just ask that you intervene in people's lives this holiday. And I yes, thank you for Lord. it. Yes, Lord. Your Christmas angel yeah. is there <laughs> to help you. Help is on the way. It's not time for giving up. The Bible calls the depression, it comes from the enemy, the spirit of heaviness. I always thought about writing a book, uh, called The Spirit of Heaviness is More Than a Weight Problem. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would be my title. It's more than a weight problem. Because I know about heaviness, but it's not talking about that. It's a heaviness that comes on you that this, the, the enemy works in your mind and tries to just manipulate you and bring fear in your life. And say, what am I? Matter of fact, tomorrow, man, he had me crying in my office. Tomorrow, we were talking about our show tomorrow. Eddie Bolton is coming on. He's a great country uh, gospel singer. And he went through the same thing. He went up to a mountain to, to just end it all because of the enemy was using religion and things that to make him feel like he wasn't good enough. And we're going to share that tomorrow. So tomorrow's a program worth watching. We're going to go a few extra minutes here because, Jared, I want you to sing. Can you come tomorrow too? Are you guys going to be yeah. here tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's our Christmas yeah, party know. and everything. You know, that's a shame. Well, then you'll have to sing, okay? You got another song you can do for us? Close us out with a song. While he's going to his guitar and getting ready to sing your last song, thank thank God for what he's done in Jared and what he can do for you. And it just it's no accident today and even tomorrow's program we'll talk about this. God wants to get you through to the other side. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. Man may leave you. Friends, family, they may leave you and desert you. You know, but Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Has, hasn't he proved it enough that he came and was born in a manger? He made of himself no reputation, Philippians says. Yes, hasn't he proved that? And then proved by dying for you? Like I said earlier, I'll die for some people. I'll die for my family. I'll die for some friends that I love. But there's some people I would not die for. But Jesus died for everybody. Has he not proved his love? Would you reach out to him because he's there for you? And just take us out today. Tomorrow, like I said, Eddie Bolton and his, and his wife, uh, Julie Bolton will be here. They're great country singers. They're going to have a new show coming in the Branson show, but it's a gospel show with the Blackwoods. All right? Yeah. And so we'll talk about that. And he's a great singer and songwriter. 
And, uh, and then Barbara Fair- Fairchild's going to stop by, too. So it's all exciting. Tomorrow, uh, you won't want to miss that. And uh, remember, as he just goes out, let this minister to you, his song minister to you. And uh, Jesus is the answer for you. And he is the answer for the world today. And above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. One more time, Jared Connor. Until